Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Today we're going to take a look at model chamfer toolpath in Mastercam to show you how easy it is to chamfer parts in Mastercam. Now let's go ahead to my screen here. So my screen has a few different scenarios. Now I, I put a few different scenarios in here of what you could probably run into when you're programming. So our first scenario is going to be a 2D part with no chamfers on the model. Our second scenario will be a part with varying chamfers all over the part. And then our third scenario here is going to be adding a clamp after we have the tool path already made to see how we can avoid a possible fixture in Mastercam. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, we're going to start with the, with the model without any chamfers on it. Now where you're going to find this tool path here is up in the tool pass menu in our 2D tool pass. It'll be called the model chamfer tool path. Now, before we get into uh, building this tool path, uh, there are some limitations. So uh, the first limitation is you have to define your tool as a chamfer mill. So even if you do like to uh, use a spot drill for chamfering, uh, just define your spot drill as a chamfer mill and it'll work uh, just great for you. Um, another limitation here is all your chains need to be planar. And what I mean by that is you can't do 3D chains in here. They have to be flat chains. Other than that, a little bit with chaining, um, your chains are going to have to be going the same direction. Um, otherwise, we're going to get an incomplete tool path and it will just not calculate for you. So let's go ahead and apply this tool path to our finished part here. So as we open this up, you're going to notice your first page here. Now, where you're going to find your chains or where you're going to select your chains is called the chain geometry. It'll be on the right hand side here. Now, another thing that I want to point out here is, is solid chaining. So what I've been noticing by our end users is a lot of people aren't utilizing the solid chaining methods that Mastercam gives you for tools. So we're going to utilize this on this solid model part, and you can see how easy it'll be to go ahead and process these chains. So we're going to have a lot of options here. We're going to have edges. We're going to have loops, faces, partial loops. And then the bottom four are really going to be key to applying these chains to chamfer. So the first one here we'll look at is outer open edges. Now I'm just going to turn that one on. Now what this is, is any outer open edge where you could slide, let's say, a one, two, three block off the edge, that's considered an open edge. So to simply go and process a lot of these open edges on this part, I can go over to my face and left click on the face. Now I don't have to worry about being on an edge. I can pick right off a of face. And as you can see, my chain is fully complete there. I can also move to this bottom face here, and just by clicking it, you notice that I get a chain all the way along that open edge. Now here's a scenario here where we have two open edges. I can just click that face, and both edges are automatically chained for me, all going the correct direction. Now I do have some other scenarios in here. I have some cavities, so we have a cavity option. So I can simply just click on cavities, pick that face, and now all my chains inside of that cavity are chained correctly for me. I have another cavity up on this top side, so I just click it. Now that hole is picked uh, to apply a chamfer to. And one other uh, way that I'm going to pick on this part here is loop. So I can go to the loop option, and now I can just simply click onto that loop that it shows me as a preview, and now I can apply a chain on there. So a simple click on there, and my uh, part is pretty much all chained for me to put chamfers on all of these edges. And as you can notice, that was very easy for me to do. I didn't have to worry about wireframe. All I had to do is pretty much click on faces. So I certainly hope you can go back and utilize the solid chaining methods. After we uh, get this part chained, um, now we're gonna go ahead and we can select our tool. And once again, I already have a chamfer uh, mill created here. Uh, just make sure you define it as a chamfer mill or you won't get any tool path at all. As far as cup parameters go, uh, the cup parameters page is pretty simplified, right? Uh, if your part, like this one here, doesn't have any chamfers on it, then we need to define a chamfer width, which I did here. So I'm gonna go and actually add five thou to what I had in there. We're gonna go and put 10 thousandths chamfers on this part. We also imply the top offset option or the bottom offset option. Now what this is going to do is it's going to move the cut over and down depending on the value you put in there. So if you want to cut higher up on the flute, you have full say there with a bottom offset or potentially a top offset there. 
Everything else on this page is going to be your standard master cam um, options as far as compensation, um, you know, stock cleave on walls and floors. Uh, the other options here, lead in and lead out is going to be important. So we're going to have to use lead in and lead out because we're getting into wear comp. So we have to make sure that we uh, value these correctly for what we want. And in this case, I'm just going to do a 35% length and a 13% radius into that cut. As far as linking parameters go, there is no depth. This is an automatic toolpath looking at your solid model. And this is going to take care of essentially everything for you. So if I go ahead and green check, I now have chamfers all over my part um, that I had chained. Now, there's a couple cool things that happen here. So the model chamfer toolpath, why it has so much power when you're programming is it's model aware. So it can't collide essentially. So let's go ahead and look at this scenario down on this bottom corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and back plot my toolpath and I'm going to move my tool where I can see it here. And one of the first things you're going to notice here is my chain went all the way to this corner. Now when I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it didn't collide with that corner. It trimmed my tool path back. Now as we work along here, if we continue around this edge, my tool is now going to collide with this little island that's sticking up, which could potentially be an issue. So what this tool path does is it automatically detects that possible collision, trims my tool path back, and continues on as close as it can get to the next side, as you can see here. And that's really the power here to make it so simple to be able to process these chamfers on these complex potential parts. Now let's go ahead and look at another scenario here. Let's go ahead and look at the scenario where I have chamfers on my part. Now, I have varying chamfers. I got a 30 thousandths chamfer on this edge. I got a 10 thou chamfer on this edge. And I got 20 thou chamfers in here. So these are varying chamfers. Now this is going to be the same exact process here. I can go and make a model chamfer toolpath, and I'm going to select my chains exactly the same way that I did previous. So I'm going to go ahead and just start picking my faces once again. Um, and let me go back, I had cavity selected, and this red slash allows you to go back, get rid of them chains on the fly, and now change my option here. So now my correct chaining option is picked, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to chain or cavities and pick these two cavities out of here. So we'll just apply this over where these varying chamfers are so we can kind of see the difference here. And once we get into our parameters, they're gonna be exactly the same with the exception of chamfer width. Now, if your model has chamfers on it, we zero this number out. If your model doesn't have chamfers like we've seen the first time, we have to apply a chamfer. So this is kind of a, a crossroad here. Um, if your model is partially chamfered, you're probably just going to be able to pick the edges that have the chamfers and then put that at zero. Uh, then you'd have to do another op, pick the edges that don't have a chamfer, and then apply a chamfer to that edge. So keep that in mind once you're going with this. Otherwise, I'm just going to green check, and now I'm going to have essentially the same chains here, but now it's model aware to be able to go and put them varying chamfers on the part. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and verify. So if we go ahead and verify this along my part here, you're gonna notice here that I have varying chamfers. There's a bigger chamfer there, there's my smaller chamfer there. And that's kind of what I was getting at if, uh, if you have varying chamfers, how nice this tool path is, because now I don't have to split this uh, part up into a bunch of tool paths. I can just do it in one and it'll take care of it for me. Um, other scenarios here, let's go ahead and add a clamp. So I just added a clamp to the back side of my vise here. And if I continue on, we're gonna notice that my chain goes right through that clamp. So another nice feature we have with this toolpath, so we can go back into the parameters here and we can go back to toolpath type and we have avoidance model here that we can pick. So if I go to avoidance model, now I can go ahead and I can just select my model with a triple click. I can end selection and now I can give it a clearance value there. Right now I have 50 thousandths in there. So the tool will work up within 50 thousandths and then leap over the part and continue on. So if I go ahead and green check now, you're gonna notice that my tool path trimmed back in these areas. So it won't collide into that part. And here we will see the trim back. 
So it gets as close as it can get, trims it out with them values that I gave it and continues on, which is a really cool feature for them parts where you have external fixturing all over the part. You don't have to worry about breaking chains or anything like that. You pick the whole chain, pick your avoidance regions and continue on with your day. So as you can see with all of these uh, tools that Mastercam gives you, to easily select chains with solid chaining and with all the features inside of the model chamfer toolpath to look at uh, fixturing, um, look at different size chamfers potentially. Um, these tools are really what makes Mastercam number one in the industry. If you currently aren't a Mastercam user, you can see by the couple tools that I showed you today how much better we can program parts and how much easier we can process that information. So I definitely hope you can go back, check out our YouTube channel for more informational videos that we are making and to make you the best master of CAM. And also for the best training and support in the industry, definitely contact Prototech Engineering for any questions, master CAM. And thanks again.